welcome back to Jotun. And yes, I will stick to Jotun. And drawing R. The next realm is a um, celestial, I suppose you can say, realm. And I don't think it has its own specific name. And the devs just put Yggdrasil in there. Even though it's clearly not Yggdrasil, it's more of the sky. So what you do is you hit these pylons in order to create patterns that match these uh, constellations. And that's all you do in this map. So what we need to do now is we essentially need to go around the map and uh, create, in such a way, four more constellations. And over here we have the first environmental hazard of this uh, celestial realm. And these are lightning bolts, and they hurt. They hurt a little bit. They they are more of a, a chip away at your health kind of danger, but they stun you. And uh, when there are a lot of them, it becomes a pain to deal with. Also, yes, the constellations that we need to, uh, well, create, I suppose, to make, to match, they become progressively bigger and bigger and bigger, and there's more and more of these uh, lightning bolts with each one. So it does become difficult in the end. Now pay attention to where this checkpoint is to the spiral and on the north, in the northernmost part of the map you could have seen the uh, a geometric figure that does not have a specific name. It's actually where the skill shrine is for this level. And this is where the map is misleading and this is why I was complaining earlier that uh, oftentimes the map is useless until after you have explored the, well, the level.
What this power does is it increases the amount of damage that Thora does with her blows. And as all the other skills, it only lasts for two, maybe three seconds. By the way, I apologize if my voice sounds weird, it's because I have a sore throat. This is where making matching these constellations gets difficult. However, it is nowhere near as bad as these uh, lightning bolts will be when we are dealing with them during the boss fight for this realm. What we see here is the new environmental hazard, these white lightning bolts. Do not get hit by them, trust me, you don't want that to happen, because if you do, you get about a third of your total health cut off, and you get a bright white flash for a second where you cannot see anything. And by the way, it's also going to happen during the boss fight. And it's going to make the boss fight also much cheaper. Case in point. I also really like the uh, artistic design for these uh, clouds. Both large clouds that are platforms for Thora and the small clouds clouds that are, uh, well, background. I like this uh, swirly design, it reminds me of... Uh, what does it remind me of? I'm trying to remember. It reminds me of uh, Rayman 2. This is where you have to actually be careful and where you have to actually try. Believe me, it's harder than it seems and I have died here. More than once even. There is nothing left to explore, we can return to Ginnungagap.
Now the second level in this sky slash celestial realm is actually Yggdrasil. Specifically, it's crown tops. This level is one of those that are a complete nightmare to navigate. The eagle is not actually nameless. The eagle is the corpse eater. I cannot for the life of me remember its name, but there is a name. I know it because Hypercrap Tank made a write-up on this in the thread. By the way, check them out even if you're not from something awful. It's an interesting read. This is a hazard that is not reused in the boss fight and thank heaven that it's not because, well, let's just say that whether you can dodge it or not is entirely random or maybe it's dependent on something that I have not managed to ever figure out. I believe I managed like once or twice to dodge this eagle's attack and all the other times I get hit. The nest of the eagle is actually accessible. And I will show it off uh, after I've gotten the rune. And yes, this is the point where I have to look at the map occasionally to be able to navigate this level, because even though I've played it multiple times beforehand, it's still pretty damn hard to navigate. By the way, if you are wondering, yes, I have died to this eagle. Yes, this is actually how it happened.
þú hefur fundið báðar rúnir hags, storm jötunsins sem ræður yfir skýjónum. Haltu áfram að kanna svæðið eða snúðu aftur í ginnunga gap. Eftir eskitrín endilum er ratatúskur orð veðurfölnis nýður til ormsins nýþöks. And now we will continue exploring. Come on, where's the cut? There it is. Yes, game, that is totally not cheap. And now for the roost of the eagle. I mean, the nest, not the roost, the nest. You can't actually proceed anywhere, it's a dead end, it's just here to be, well, to be here. And now finally for the Ethan's apple in this level. It's in the westernmost part of the map. And now for the hard part. I was not looking forward forward to this Jotun. This is also the last Jotun that I fought off camera before I started the Let's Play, so... The following few ones I am going to figure out the pattern as I go. But oh, is this one not easy to beat. beat. Long vowels are my bane. There will be no hail, but there will be crisis and chaos. From the very beginning you have to be very careful because even as she does this um, starting animation you have to dodge these lightning bolts which are now marked white instead of black like they were in the uh, in the level in the first level of this realm once again not bad at all in the beginning you keep walking around and delivering the death by a thousand cuts and then it's gonna get tougher and tougher and tougher to the point of unfair, as always. This Jotun also gets bonus points for actually... Um, 
for actually attacking in the direction of Thora, instead of just sticking to a pattern that is done irrespective of the position of the player character, like the other two Yotis that we previously fought did. When this happens, your attacks do double damage to her. And yay, the more the merrier. And yes, they do attack independently. And this is where it becomes cheap, because sometimes you will simply be caught in a crossfire where uh, you will get inevitably hit by at least one of the attacks. It does sometimes happen, and when it happens, there is no avoiding that. And when that happens, you are dead. As such was the case here, for example. I had only one direction to go, and that was along the lines of that energy blast. And now for the death montage. Enjoy! That one was my own fault. And now we're getting somewhere. If you are wondering, the raw footage for this part was over 53 minutes long. So yeah, that was a lot of uh, this Yotun. I just... I'm not even gonna try to pronounce her name. By the way, the uh, model of the Yotun will sometimes uh, get outside of the edges of this platform that uh, Thora is on. And yes, when this happens, you cannot hit anything. You just run around and wait for her to teleport to a different place. This is where I try to finish the fight as quickly as I possibly can, but I'm out of the... I think that I'm out of the uh, damage power ups, but it doesn't matter.
öskur samferða manna minna og óvinna hurfu á bak við þrunugnýinn. Ég fann bræðið af mold og blóði. Fötin lindust við mig þar sem ég hljóp upp á óvinni mínu og gróf eksi mína á bólakaf í hvern þann sem dyrðist að storka mér. Í gegnum storminn sá ég föðu minn og dökkan skugga á bak við hann. Ég hrópaði varnar orð á honum en allt kom fyrir ekki. Faðu minn var myrtur. Ofsa reyði held tók mig þegar ég sá bróðu minn standa yfir föður okkar. Harma kveinn mín skáru loftið þegar ég áttaði mig á svikum hans. Hemdin fyldi skjótt á eftir er ég fórnaði lífi bróðu míns til alföðursins. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye.